is generally from the aggression. And if he doesn't have that confidence factor going in his hands, well, then he's got a big issue for him. If we have a few tech issues we're trying to fix here for the players, it should be getting those fixed very shortly and getting back into the action. But for the meantime, we're going to continue to talk about this because there is so much to unpack. And so just like PGL here, there's a lot of boxes still, uh, still lying around. But when we talk a look, take a look at this as a final, Invictus, Inferno is a map they'll be thinking about in the back of their heads as well going forward. Definitely have a real chance. But when it comes to Mirage here, what can they do, Blood, to pick this up? It's it's two things. Uh, firstly, Tyloo have to underperform a little bit, they, and that's it's hard to it's hard to really expect that, right? Tyloo usually they might mm -hmm. struggle in the first map, but then when they wake up, they wake up map number two and they just run away with it. But for them to win here, it's about uh, punishing the aggression. Somebody and danking. What are the two things? Especially danking. He gets unnecessarily over aggressive and you need to bait him in you need to ensure that on t side especially you don't allow tyloo the freedom to roam around tyloo are gonna either push in towards palace they're gonna be playing up close towards ramp or they're gonna be aggressing towards the b apps they like taking the early map control and you need to nullify that so your defaults need to be ready and even when it comes later in the round you need to be wary of that one player that's missing somebody just flanking in being a sneaky little thing <laughs> And that is something which uh, Invictus have to be wary of. But here we go, Dinko. It is a map pick from Invictus. Hence, Tyloo opting to start on the CD side. No surprises. And look at the buy from Tyloo. Not a single kit. You just want to win these aim deals. Straight up confidence coming in from Tyloo. I like to see it. I mean, this is a map where they're very confident in terms of their individual ability. We've seen it already before in this tournament. Quick note, just to add on the, the topic of somebody, he was the player that in round yesterday against Beyond, that, okay, maybe Beyond get the opening kill, maybe they look solid. He was the playmaker, getting boosted into the window, getting in behind him. He was the player that made a difference. So if you lose control of somebody on this map, well, the victors are going to have a real difficult challenge on their hands, but they're gathering outside of the A-bomb site. All five players over here towards A. You got Dan King back in CT spawn. We got Slowly and Attacker stacked up together under the wood. Now, this is a setup that's not exactly common, so Invictus have to be careful when they come out onto the bomb site. Shansa Gay diving down into the site, but it's slowly in summer getting the two first kills. Attacker's still here as well. Finally striking in. There it is. A big cleanup from Tai Lu. They find every single frag and they lose one player. That felt like a, a full counter from Tai Lu. They're just having the stack hitting all the headshots. They didn't need a kit, Dinko. That was a statement. They're like, yeah, we, we won't have to retake if you just kill every one of you before we get the bomb down. And of course, all this was possible because of uh, you know, somebody's aggression towards the B apartments early on. And then, of course, Summer slowly attack or everyone just having a, a hell of a time over the A bomb site. A little, a little lucky that the first player, you know, uh, ran out of pallets before the smoke bloomed, allowing the kill from slowly. But hey, slowly making it work and danking. Talk about aggression, Dinko. Oh, uh, always looking his direction, but then timing working out in favor of Danking. And this is where I would like him to fall back. <laughs> uh, he's so entertaining, Dinko. <laughs> Yet at the same time, I hate him. He's just so mental. He's just, he's, it's crazy he's an good. alpha chat. He's, he's, a, he's a giga chat. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he knifed someone in the previous round. <laughs> the previous map, should I say. Well, slowly... Jets down Destroyer. I mean, that's another good kill for Tai Lu. At this point, the Deagle is kind of looking neutered a little bit. Got the muzzle on. And Invictus just held back at the moment. Every kill going in favor of Tai Lu. It's somebody with another, of course. Fine. All right. Right through two smokes. The window kill coming in. The one Deag. But flying is alone. Please. Please not again. Surely not at this point. Slowly running towards him. He will with a couple of shots. And it's 2-0 for Tai Lu. They clean it up. And this is an opportunity for them to get off to a good start. Now, we've seen this against Beyond yesterday. Almost the exact same scenario play out. Where they get off to a really bad start on the first map. They allow Beyond to build up a lot of rounds and look confident. They pull all the way back. Get onto Mirage as the second map. And then get off to a good start and close them. Yeah, it, it, it just being the same thing in, in all the playoff games for, for Tai Lu. And... Let's just play off games. If I remember the game they had against Mazala, I remember where, uh, again, close close first map, and then just good old classic Tyloo in map number two. Here comes the the waterfall out from Palace, and it's a, it's a very easy shutdown, Dinko. It's nothing that's going to happen. Attacker with a couple, Summer with a triple, an easy eco mop-up. 
not losing a single player. And that's a solid start for Tai Lu. Money looking pretty solid. They have just the one SMG in the hands of Dan King. Wonder if he would be looking to upgrade that right now. You could if you want. You got the cash there, Dan King. But knowing Dan King, you're just going to stick with the MP9 and try and be a little unpredictable, one would assume. Invictus with the rifles. AK is coming out. A lot of utility as well. Not too much, but a decent chunk. Something to work with. And now, the first test for Tai Lu on Mirage. Some are getting aggressive. Dan King in behind him. This is going to give so much info to Tai Lu. They realize the ramp's completely open. There is one player positioned over towards A, and that's Shao Sergei up in Palace, and he's about to come out. He's got his knife in his hand at the moment, Blair. He'll finally pull his rifle, but he... Oh, has he spotted him? It's a good timing for him. He catches out Summer's head, and now he's careful. Thinks he could be pushed from Palace, but it's Dan King that confirms his position in front of the ramp, and that's huge from Shao Sergei. Finding that one kill, that kind of changes the round now. Invictus realize potential weakness in towards that A bomb site. So we're going to start to sprint from the connector. And Dan King has repositioned back under Wood. Attacker up on top of the ticket box, but Dan King's been spotted. He tries to take the fight. Attackers drop the bomb, but Destroyer wins the battle against Dan King. And now Attacker has more to do, and he will do it. The second kill for him. Careful of the palace position. Goes for the pre-fire, but Shasta Gay. Another important kill coming from the palace position. Now somebody rotating over. A good spray down, but can't get more than one. And it's only slowly left alone, but the bomb is in his hands. Oh. oh, that is brilliant from Slowly. He knows his position is compromised, and he knows the, the player is just baiting it out, so, the, so his second teammate can come in, and he immediately goes to the wide swing, takes the fight. Well played by Slowly there in 1v2. Looked a little scary, and look at this buy. Okay. Double up early on. Feeling pretty confident, are we? Somebody in Dan King's CT double up setup it is always fun to watch, especially on Mirage. So you know, if you're letting Dan King get freed up a little bit more, that's uh, that's a scary sign. You know, somebody can take this over and be the passive turret alper. When I say passive, I mean play B. <laughs> if somebody doesn't really know the meaning of that word. And Dan King gets freed up a little bit more. He can rotate between multiple areas on the map with that AWP and get involved a lot more. And that's exciting. More Dan King looks down in towards the ramp. A good kill. Slowly and Dan King finding the kills. Looking for more Dan King. How does he hit that? Oi destroyed the last two remaining players. And Destroyer gets one in the Deagle. But Oi tries his best. But he's walking into the waiting arms of somebody. And he's not going to miss those shots. 5-0 for Tai Lu. Fantastic start from them. They're not slowing down at all. Invictus, they they don't even really have that much money going into this round either. Yeah, I mean, most of them do. But Shasa Gay is 3.4k in the bank. He's going to have a certain weakness. And I mean, it's not a full solo buy across the board. So Tai Lu again, double up setup continued. The rifles in play, the two picked up AKs. This isn't bad from Tai Lu at all. It's not bad at all. And listen, it's it's not about it's not about me really supporting a team, and whatnot. But this is grand finals, right? And especially after Vertigo, like what a game that, what a map that was. I would be a little disappointed, Dinko. To see Tyler just run away with his map and just make it a you know a very simple map number two and winning the championship. We all expect Tyler to still win the series, but I would love to see Invictus put up the fight, at least a glimpse of the fight that we saw from them on Vertigo in this map. Still not done yet, still early days, but it's looking scary. It's looking very scary for Invictus, especially with Tyler. Everyone looking suddenly like they have all the mice, the monitors turned on, the mouse plugged in. Keyboards, RGB, everything ready to go, and they're hitting everything here. No on the A bomb side. That's interesting. I like the switch up, but fortunately for Invictus, the switch up is going to work in their favor. They're going to have a free A bomb side to work with. Summer waiting the edge of the smoke, waiting for a flashbang, perhaps. So the flashes and a Molotov from the T's are going to keep him at bay. He does spot out Shao Sage. A big gap goes for the spray. The bullets. <laughs> okay, finally, flying will take his head off. But now it's a four v four, and with two AWPs, not ideal weaponry for a retake scenario here for Tai Lu. Or oh, somebody. Ooh. Unscopes at the, the worst time possible, but he does still see Destroyer cross. He knows he's in the corner. At least he's got that information. Slowly going to try this nade, but there's only a couple of seconds left for them to make this retake work. And they've got to go quite quickly. Flying in Viva, though. Finding the important kills. Dan King's going to have to fall away. And it's finally around on the board for Invictus. It's been a long time coming. They haven't been able to get it done just yet. 
And finally, it works out for them. And it takes a 3k from flying. And he dies in the end as well. Yeah, flying. He he has been a difference maker for this team. And uh, how much can you ask of this one man? This is a little too ambitious from uh, Summer, I felt like. Just standing there and going for the full commit. But great... Uh, Great post plant, and like I said, uh, Italy were trying trying something a little different, and I won't blame them for it. I, I like when you switch things up on the CD side, makes things a little less static, and just so happens that that was a one run, and Victus went for the clean A take, and it works out in their favor. So they'll take it five to one. They go for the usual defaults, you know, a couple of players towards apps. It's going to be Viva looking to find the pick on somebody, taking on a pass control, and once again Tai Lu. I, I like this from from uh, Tyler Denko. Even even if it might not work out, the fact that they're willing to switch it up, switch up the positioning, and switch up the way they're playing the CD side setup here, it, it makes them a hard. It makes it very hard to read what they're up to, and that is something I really wish BG did on their Mirage. Like, look at the way Danking's playing with the AWP. He's pretty much everywhere, and that's such a terrifying proposition if you're uh, Invictus. Well, just over a minute or under a minute now for Destroyer as he walks forward. It's going to be a lineup of two players. That's perfect for him. Summer and Dan King both going down. Oi as well delivering. And suddenly the round goes in favor of Invictus, but the bomb still needs to be recovered at this moment in time. An attacker's position could be everything. He picks up one and the Destroyer repositions <gasps> and shuts down Shasuke as well. Somehow attacker making this work alone. And it's just Oi, the last remaining player in this one versus one. Attacker could be anywhere. He could be on the A bomb site. He could be playing towards the window. Instead, attackers made the call to go towards B, and that's the wrong call at the moment. As always, going to walk up through top connector and run towards the A bomb site. Attackers going to have to make the quick rotation, and he's 15 HP. So winning this round becomes very difficult. And it's extremely difficult indeed, especially like you said, Denko. Look at how low he is, and even with the smoke he's got in the kit, if he even if he sticks it. Just one bullet, one bullet for from 30 remaining and always uh, AK-47 is going to suffice. Now, always kind of low as well. An attacker realizes not much time. He can't just keep walking towards the bomb site. Smoke will be deployed. And Oi just needs a spray, but attacker is going to stick it as a question. And he won't stick it, but doesn't really matter, does it? Oi, just a one bullet he needed and he will land it. And it's going to be Invictus winning a couple of rounds back to back. And with that, I was about to say they might have broken the money, but they haven't. Tyloo can... Still eke out a buy. And if I'm Tyler, I'm going for this right now. Well, actually, you know what? This is this is pretty decent. You know, they, they have a few pistols, few upgrade danking with the AWP investment, pretty risky, but at least the money is equalized. And even if they lose this round, they can still uh they still have some money in the bank. They should be able to buy again anyway. Well, flashing the underpass, destroyer's gonna walk forward with it. Slowly with his team mid in behind him. Victors have a good opportunity now to start to build up a couple of rounds. Banking aggressive towards Palace. It's a position we see him in quite often on the CT side with that orb. Flying's got rid of slowly, and now they move forward. They'll pick up a weapon. A little pistol upgrade for him. But it's just a matter of time before Invictus find this round win. Before they see themselves a third... Surely at this point, I say that, but Tyloo are incredible on the pistols, but Flying is continuing to find kills. Somebody walking through short. Trying to get up close to personal with Viva. He might be able to do so, but he's spotted from the connector, and that's Destroyer finding the kill. Summer walks forward, just the USP in his hands. He nearly gets the kill on the Destroyer, but it's not going to work out. And Dan King now with it all to do a 1 versus 5, the quick shot, but of course, just too many players. And that's going to be around 4 Invictus. Yeah, very clean round, in fact, considering Talu had invested quite a bit and Dan King not able to really do much with that big investment. But like I said, money is there. Talu going to be buying back an M-Force to even have the uh, the AWP in hands of Dan King once more. And looks like uh, Invictus have answered back, Dinko. I was 5-0 uh, was saying, like, I don't want Talu to just run away with this and make it a very lopsided series. And Invictus are like, all right, we hear you, fam gonna fight and they're fighting right now and they've even built up a, a decent 
decent war chest to have some money for the latter rounds. I've never seen that animation with the hand getting with the with the left hand shaking. Did you, did you notice that? I did, yeah. Never seen well, that. One animation. of the new knife animations. That's pretty cool. I don't even know what the name of the knife is anymore. Me neither. I kind of stopped paying attention to it after It's just a while. too many. It's just too many to keep track of. It's oh, also very go. distracting, oh. I feel. Listen, are you really an AWP player if you don't have a butterfly knife? Are you? True, I think pretty much every one of them has them. Apart from Kenny S, I think he uses a flip knife. Oh, fair enough. Flip knife works as well. But you need like a, a well-animated knife. If you want to hit your AWP shots, that's like so you have to finish life. with the kill, the stylish play, finish it off with a little flare and your knife as well. And there we go. I mean, the flip knife is like the most vanilla one. It is very, very simple. It just kind of flips out and that's it. I think the, the flip knife is actually the default knife in Go the first time it came out in the bid, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it was. And uh, the carabit, man. Like, if you play 4x3 black bars or 4x3 stretch, the knife gets cuts in half. It gets cut in half, so it kind of ruins it, which is why I sold my, my carabit, like, years ago, because I couldn't even see my knife in the, in the default animation. You gotta play in that full view model. <laughs> Stick it out, the, the view model offset Y, just max it out. <laughs> Bring it in the center a little bit. I'm a simple man, Dinka. We're I'm a boomer. I like playing my four by four by three stretched, and I'm okay with that. I'm a happy man with that. We do have a little bit of a technical issue, ladies and gents. Hopefully, it should get sorted out real quickly. It looks like I don't know for whom it is. There we go, Drony McDrone face. I don't know. Think Hulk is right calling it Dave now. So. I'm calling it Dave. All right, yeah. Dave, showing us attacker who has used twelve grenades, which is quite a few considering. Uh, we are how many rounds in? Like eight rounds in. Summer had like I think like sixty, I think sixty or seventy grenades used in like twenty rounds or something. I remember I think it was summer. That was insane number was of summer, uh, yeah. utility use. Yeah, we do have a little bit of update that uh, Invictus Gaming one of the players having some keyboard issues, so that shouldn't be a problem. At least it's not like changing a graphics card, Denko. No, uh, that was uh, that was quite the excuse, really. Um, I mean, it's a valid reason as to why you would want to change. Uh, you would need a, a long tech pause, but kind of interesting. I mean, we haven't had too many graphics card changes. But a keyboard, much more reasonable. I think probably a player has spilt something on it. It's quite common. Well, the drones put something out, but we're not looking at it. We're looking at the TV antenna instead. There we go. It's gone oh. now. Wait, what's it showing? I wanted to see what it was showing. It's a, it's a oh. mystery, Blade. We will never know. God damn it. It could have been you. I get anxiety when that happens. Because we couldn't see it, because it wasn't, you know, at average height, we can probably assume it was Mitch. <laughs> it's been a week, Dinko, since the poor man has uh, has left the broadcast and <laughs> still never stop berating him. You know what? I love it. Let's never stop. Yeah, let's keep going. Even when this tournament's done. Just we'll, just, uh, we'll make a WhatsApp group just hitting on Mitch. Well, there we go. Utility file. A lot of utility files for both the teams. Attacker and a flying. Flying, of course. Having stepped up in the past couple of rounds, but here we go. Everyone's back. The keyboards are plugged in. The graphics cards are running as well. And once more, we have Danking with the AWP. Utility, pretty sparse for the CT side. They have like three smokes remaining, a couple of flashbangs, and just a one kit for somebody. I mean, the counter utility will be a problem, Dinko. They have the smokes to like probably delay the T's, but no nades, no molotovs, no incendiaries rather, to kind of toss in if an execute does come in from uh, from Invictus Destroyer, leading the way. He's really good in this jungle area. On, on mirages how many rounds have you seen from him just like single-handed just going in the jungle getting a double kill just opening things up oh that's that's not ideal though but attacker that's your position get, just given away and destroyer he strikes two kills looking for more but slowly crouches below oh. the bullet and slowly he's doing it all on his lonesome man i don't know how he's even allowed to stay alive and he pushes on further dinker what an absolute nutcase well he gets the two important kills dan king actually could have got that man advantage onto viva but he misses the shot and Viva gets away. And now they've got a chance to win this round again. Invictus, 30 seconds. They'll gather up and hit B. There's only 
There's no one there. There's no one on the B-bomb side, Blair. They're going to have to play this retake. And they've only got one kit and slowly he's low in HP. They've got one flash buying. A B retake. I mean, it's not looking too realistic right now. They need a couple of kills quite quickly. And while well, somebody's in the perfect position to shut down Viva, he was looking back this way. Now he needs to be ready, but he's got an aid in his hand. Viva, every time he has an aid in his hand, somebody peeks him. And now moving back into the site. Oi spotted, taken down, and the kills all come in from Tai Lu. It's a sixth round picked up. They had no one on the B-bomb site. Of course, they still make it work. Just the one flash by, and they didn't even need to use it. That was just a clinical retake from Tai Lu, right? Like a three-pronged retake. And a little unfortunate for Viva, but Viva, he had to toss in the incent, the, the Molotov. What they weren't expecting was how quick the retake was. Slowly, man. How does he... He does Look such a great job Look how close that was. Oh. Look at the way uh. they're all striking tandem, right? Somebody gets killed in Viva, that's the moment slowly peeks in. And how... Wait, what? Did they not hit? I think he was a little bit to the right, maybe moving away. I think he was fitting maybe. away to the left side as he took mm -hmm. the shot, unfortunately. But he's back here again. He's in the round. He's got the AWP and he's going aggressive towards ramp. Danking has been a little quiet so far in Mirage. I mean, we've seen him with the AWP, I, I feel like, almost every round. Oh, the timing. Him. He has really woken up in these last couple of rounds, but... He's just so fantastic towards his, you know, top mid, sorry, uh, bottom mid jungle area, like towards a window. He, he's always been in, in the midst of the action. Yeah, he's not the star player. Yeah, he doesn't have the AWP, but he's so good at just kind of like splitting the bomb side, splitting the CT defense and kind of being the uh, the player to cut off the rotation. And now somebody tags up. What you got? He's going to find one. Now he knows a B hit's definitely going to be coming in. Second kill comes over somebody, and I love this from him. He's going to fall back, not giving away his life. He's established a man advantage for his team, and now he's waiting for backup to arrive. Destroyer, though. Summer, he's so aware. Somebody getting rid of shots, okay, but Destroyer with another important kill. He's going to be walking <gasps> forward. Somebody somehow hits the shot, but he's under pressure. The smoke in his face, he's held in behind it, but he's going to go walk through and Destroyer shuts him down through it. That's a third kill for him in the round. He is doing everything for this team, and he might just continue at 4K. No. Attacker, quicker on the shot. Missed shot delivering, but it's Viva now into the one versus two. Up against Dan King, who has been quiet, but Viva has been the same. Two kills. One of which coming in this round, but he looks to try and double that. They're looking for more here on the Dan King, and he's going to be overrun. Dan King on the CZ, pulls the sidearm, and the Battle of the Alpers comes down to the pistol. And it's another round picked up for Tai Lu. 7-3, yet another B retake. And if you're uh, if you're destroyer, you're very upset about this. You, you've had so much impact across the last couple of rounds now at this point, and you just keep losing these retakes. That was all somebody. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is the replay. Okay. okay. That... Oh yeah, it's like it was under below his, his armpit. Elbow. Yeah, just on his below his elbow. Okay, somebody that round was just phenomenal. Okay, that, you can't yeah, you right can't below. miss by much more. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate for him. But nonetheless, they do go on to win the round, and they also win this one. So money. Well, if they win this round, it's gonna be looking good. <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> just a game just with a double kill on the Mac Ten, and well, goodbye. I think Ty Lu realized. Well, that's, that's not the way we want to start that round. And potentially, might even go on to lose this now if Shasuke can get another. Three versus five retake on the same bomb site. Shasuke luckily going down. Of course, it's slowly. This guy, I, I said it on Vertigo. He may not get the flashy of kills, but he is always finding the consistent ones. You can always rely on him to be a solid player for you. I'm just going to go for the... Oh, oh, oh. 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 Wow. Ooh, the timing on that danking. So lucky to stay alive. But now, now they know where at least one player is. Destroyer hasn't been spotted out yet. Gun not spotted. Oh, oh, he peeks. What timing. Incredible timing. But slowly finds a kill. And it's all on somebody. There's no time remaining. There's zero time remaining. And somebody just going for the exits. But considering the investment into that round, I mean... And Victor's are super happy with this to go. They are going to be so happy with it. And Xiao Sage, what, what a madman. Like, how does he pull that off? Mac 10 at that range against two rifles? Alone? It tears them to shreds. And he was on two kills so far in this entire game. And what a way. What a way to wake up. I thought for a moment, when Dan King, if he, he molly's palace there, then they probably win that round.
or at least have a much better chance because that Molotov would have forced the straw out immediately into the, the eyes of both Dan King and somebody back from CT. Probably get that kill pretty quickly. Then you can focus in from CT and jungle onto the ramp player. But of course, with uh, with the information we are savvy to, we can see that as the play. Dan King having to make the decision to toss the Molotov towards Ninja. It doesn't work out, but Tyloo, right, they've got the man advantage into this round. Shots okay. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> the timing couldn't be more perfect for Shao Guy. He gets such a good read on that. Destroy is so good. Uh, I know I've like, said it like three times already, but somehow he just find manages to find this little tiny, tiny, tiny window of opportunity to just sneak his way towards that jungle area. And he's been so instrumental in so many of these rounds just by being there. Flying. Not able to deal much damage. The destroy finds slowly. And one player trapped. It's going to be Summer. There's still a player flanking in from behind Dinko. And it's going to be a four. Somebody going for the full spray. Now all on Danking. But they check. Oh. And Danking, <laughs> that is just so unfortunate. And now immediately, they kind of do it for the double peek. And there you have it around. It's done. Tile is forced by. Not panning out. Invictus, five rounds. And considering it was 5-0 at one point. Invictus, they're showing that they still have a pulse, Dinko. They're still going to kick, claw, fight, bite, whatever it takes to ensure that we go to map number three. And the most impressive part about that round was the fact that they lost the early kill as well and still turned it around. Shao Gay has really stepped up his performance in these last couple of rounds now. Six kills on the board. Tai Lu on the full eco. Five USPs. The only investment is one single flashbang that slowly is about to throw into middle for his teammates. But Shao Gay has already got down in towards the A bomb site. He's out towards Tetris. It's kind of waiting for the smoke to fade, I believe, and then they're going to start charging down short. It comes down with a flash buying. Should be from slowly, but... In fact, Tyler decided just to tuck away. They're not going aggressive at all. There comes the flash. Now there is the push. Finally coming through. It works out for one kill on Summer, but the rest are cleaned up. And it's just somebody left alone into the one versus four. He'll sit back with a USP. But there's no chance of him doing anything in this now. It's going to be a sixth round four Invictus Gaming. Seven, six... You get the buy into the next round for Tai Lu. And if Victus win that one, well, real chance here on Mirage. Six rounds on the T side, Mirage. That's uh, almost mission accomplished, Denko. I mean, obviously, the final mission would be winning the map. But six rounds is great already. And looking at the money for Tai Lu, if they're able to. It, it won't be like, you know, full-fledged buys. Danking won't have his weapon of choice as well. And even when Danking has had his weapon of choice, he's been very, quite his bottom fragging right now for his team, Dinko. And the only player below him is the other usual suspect, Viva. Both the, uh, I wouldn't say the primary opera, but Viva being, you know, the X-Factor for, for Invictus and Danking being the primary opera for Tyloo. Both of them having kind of a very quiet map on a map which should be favoring them. Which is, uh, curious to say the least. Slowly, just gonna be sitting back, destroying Oi, walking forward, slowly trying to hold on as they go around the corner. It's gonna be slowly with the spray. He's not gonna get a single kill out of that. Really should have. Got at least one there. Flying as well, doing good work as he... Short work of Summer, and now Dan King gets aggressive, realizing a play needs to be made for Tyloo, and that's exactly what Dan King's gonna do! Nearly a third kill, that would have been ridiculous, but luckily he goes down to Destroyer. He's 14 HP though, and that is a bit of an issue moving forward now. Tyloo, they're gonna be looking for this 8th round if they can somehow pull off a 2 versus 3, but Invictus, they still hold the advantage. And how many times have we seen Shao Tsai Gay out on towards this a bomb site via the ramp? He hasn't been spotted, he hasn't really been dealt with, in these last couple of rounds, and he's out here again. <laughs> oh. Well, there we go. Somebody's dead. He's dead. He doesn't know where Destroyer is. Destroyer is sticking around, floating around. That bottom mid position, that's his domain. He's just been fantastic so far. 17 kills for Destroyer, Dinko. And as I take his name, here we go. The head-to-head -head coming up. He's been just fantastic for his team. Not a single player on the side of Invictus have hit double digits. 
apart from Destroyer, and he's been so instrumental. Even if it's like, it's not just about getting 3Ks, but just him being alive and present towards that jungle position, bottom mid position, just cutting off the rotations for Tai Lu. It's just been so instrumental in them getting to seven rounds as we do enter the final round of the first half of map number two. Tai Lu with kind of a Hail Mary buy. First kill goes their way, second kill as well, but Danking replies back, but it's not good enough. Shao Sage with a double trade, leaving it all in slowly, who gets spotted out tries to line up the shot but it's all in somebody didn't go and this guy he can be a genius at times so max 7 1v4 on mirage i have my reservations i think they're uh I think they're founded after side blood i think you're you're okay with that well this could be somebody goes down shouts that guy what a half from him he was quiet throughout the start of the game but hey can i just turn it up a gear right he just kind of had this one round where he pops off with the mac 10 and then from then on in had just been dominant and you can feel immediately the half just got turned around completely and vic just now lead the way going into the second round advantage out of the t side they'll be happy with that if they can win this pistol round they're in a real good spot here on mirage they are indeed and uh five zero i am still trying to comprehend how Invictus have turned this one around. 5-0 for Tai Lu and Invictus, they put up 8 on the T side. That's, uh, I mean, that's as good as it can get. The only thing that could have gone better for them is they won the pistol round. But here we go, 8-7. to seven. The hit is going to be coming towards A. No time being wasted from Tai Lu. They're just going to go straight into towards A. But that nade, my word. That's so much of damage being dealt on the Tai Lu. But yet to get a kill, our Invictus. It's Shao Sage, big gap in the smoke. He's counting the players jumping on in. Rattling up bullets at where the bomb is getting planted. And now the 5v5. You've seen this from Tai Lu so many times, Dinko, where they set up the flashbang. But Shao oh. Sage is going to get the first kill. That is huge. Flash going to pop, but not able to take advantage. But attacker, he's going to strike one, two, looking for more. And that's going to be the shutdown coming out from Tai Lu in a post plant. Three stay alive. It was looking so good for Invictus, but attacker, he wakes up. Three kills for attacker. I mean, he's been pretty quiet, I think, in the playoffs so far. He was really, really solid in the middle of the group stages and towards the end. But when it's come into the playoffs, Attacker has not really been on that same form. And this is a big turnaround from him into the pistol. Three beautiful kills, delivering Tyloo in eighth round. And a good start coming into the second half. And I love this. It's Dan King on a P90. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go. Why? You, what? Screw it. You, you, can't ask you can buy like a Galil. <laughs> You could buy any other SMG and the bonus money would be still better. And you could also buy a Galil. <laughs> it's, just, it's just much better than the P90. Uh, What's a P90 bonus money for a kill? Is it like 100? 300? I forget. Anyway, yes, the P90 doesn't make sense in this scenario, but this is Danking, Dinko, the Giga Chad of Asian Counter Strike. He doesn't care. It's like, as somebody has matured as a Counter Strike player, all his madness has been transferred over to Danking. It's it's interesting to watch. Nice work from Viva there. Not taking any damage. That's that's kind of wild. Okay. All right, Viva. You've been quiet so far, but he's going to wake on up. Picks up an AK-47. Another kill for Viva. Looking for the 4K. It's all in Danking Tinko and a P90. And there was a time. If there was a time for this gun to sing, now is the time. But Chao Sage will deny him. And the P90 gets nothing done. What a round from Viva, though. Brilliant stuff from him. What, what has just happened? Are, are you okay? Are you, are you no, fine? No, I, I don't know why it, Tyler have, they just confused me completely. Why have, why have they got the P90 to start with? Why are they losing that round? Well, going into this one, they'll buy up the Deagles to try and make up for the mistake. And kill reward bonus is indeed $300 for the P90, which is less than the normal SMGs. And therefore, an ex more expensive, terrible option that you should have bought the Galil, which is $1,800 and just so much better. Well, thank you anyway, Danking, for that display of the P90 and, and why everybody should not use it or purchase it. And well, Attacker gets one kill, destroyed going down, flying King aggressive, and we'll get rid of him in reply. And now it's a four versus four. They move out, but there's another shot. Summer gets rid of Viva. And you know the Tyler are deadly on the pistols as well. So Invictus, they're going to take their time. They're going to respect this a little bit, trying to fight a long range. Shouts out Gay gets rid of Attacker. And well, he's looking for more here. And in the connector, Slowly's head pops off as well. And it's a big flying. Keep an eye on flying here. Coming around the backside. It's on to somebody into the one versus two. 
He's got the connection position, but he's got to win this clutch now. The crossover, the bomb being stuck, and go. This round's lost. Somebody can't get through, and Flying gets his head right off. Ten to hit on the board. Victor's gaming. It may be a little bit messy, but they still win the rounds. And now they're just getting closer and closer to the scoreline that they're looking for. And that will be to take Mirage away. This forces to that third map. Crucial round of win. That looked, got very scary for Invictus, but good recovery in the end. Tyloo, I have... Uh, okay. I mean, it makes sense. Invictus' money isn't that great, but the thing is, they're not going to break the economy. Invictus can still purchase into the next round even if they lose this one. Especially if they can like, hold onto a couple of these guns here. And Tyloo, we saw this from them earlier yesterday, Dinko. We saw how somebody held W... And just rushed on in with the Mac 10. He spots one player out. He knows where he is. And he's on the hunt. Pre-firing on the corner. Spots the second player as well. But they don't know about this other player waiting behind. And it is, of course, Oi. It's all in him. Completely unaware are the Tyloo players. And Oi going for the full spray. 3k for him. Looking for more. And he just might have saved his team here. And he's trapped in the corner. Waiting for Vacuum to arrive. Which will arrive in the hands of Flying. And now 2v2. Pure utter chaos. Pandemonium on his B-bomb side. And Oi looking for the ace. He doesn't get it, but he's done the job, Dinko. He's saved his team. And Invictus, they hold on. I don't know how they're winning these rounds. They have one player alive, two players alive. But it doesn't matter as long as they keep winning the rounds. If you're in Tai Lu's shoes right now, you're getting very frustrated because these are the counter rounds Tai Lu win. They're not used to not winning these. Invictus continuing to batter them down. Tai Lu, the scrappy buys, they often work out. They're relentless in them. Maybe two out of three don't work, but that one time they will. No matter what opponent they're going up against, but Invictus, they're stopping that from happening. And Tai Lu, every round that they do that in, every time they go for the force by investment, they're setting themselves up for uh, a bit of an issue going into the next rounds. And Invictus are losing none of them. They're just picking them up. It may not be clean. It may have to, to take hero plays from individuals. But they're winning the rounds, and that's all that matters. And now they step one step closer the victory here on Mirage in the grand final. They were so close to taking Vertigo. But again, never count Tyloo out of anything. Oh yeah, that's one thing I, I believe everyone would have learned by now. And Oi, generally not a player you see that often in the kill feed. He just does his role, but that was a genius hole. I, we, well, we see him in a kill feed now, Dinko, but... On the, on the receiving end, unfortunately. Destroy and Shao Sage. Information gleaned by Tyloo is where two of the players are. And with that, they're not going to push a luck. Attacker is found. This narrow little window slowly finds Viva and the Deagles doing so much work. Attacker is going to push ahead. I don't think so. And he's now getting challenged, but he somehow manages to escape. The timing working out wonderfully for him, but it's all in flying, Dinko. The hero. The hero of Vertigo, and he's looking to do everything on his own again. Finds two, looking for more. Shao Sang in the meantime, trapped in the corner as the attacker finds him. But it's still a 2v2, and it's going to favor the CD side, considering where the bomb has dropped. But attacker, he still gets a kill, Dinko. It's all on flying now. Well, flying, he could win this. Again, this is what I was just talking about. Tai Lu, they go for these buys time and time again. Usually, they're used to winning at least one of them. Could this be the one? Flying, the first headshot is there, slowly now, stuck alone, he picks up the bomb, but flying, he will go down slowly, somehow takes him away with the decal, just drive-by shooting, and it's a ninth round for Tai Lu, Invictus Gaming, they lose it, and their money is gone, the war of attrition has been won by Tai Lu, and we're gonna have to see whether or not Invictus go to the pistols in this next round. But this is just one of those fantastic pop-off rounds from Slowly. Getting very important kills. Attacker stepping up with a rifle as well. And this just clean, under pressure. Slowly still finds the kill. And now it will be the force buy from Invictus. They lose this one. Tyler are going to tie things up. And you're going to point out Attacker, right? He wasn't fighting 5, 7 HP or something. He gets a kill onto Shao Saga in short. And gets a dink on the final player. That was what allowed Slowly to win that clutch. Huge play. Aggression from the CTs towards ramp. But Tyloo, they played passive. Slowly, waiting patiently. Attackers there as well. They have so much utility. They're making a lot of noise towards Palace. There's somebody. Look at look at the CTs positions here, Dinko. It either works out, they shut it down, or they're going to get completely mowed down by Tyloo just running up towards the bomb side. And it is a slaughter, Dinko. One player remains standing. It's Destroyer spamming over the Deagle. But the battle will be won by Tyler when the Shao Sage once more does something truly miraculous.
That's just a good round from Tyloo, really thinking about all of the possibilities. They're completely aware of the possibility of players being aggressive in towards ramp, of a stack potentially being there on the A-bomb site. They're ready for Shao Gay about to walk through the smoke. They Molotov him off. And the chances of Invictus winning this are completely gone. It's just Oi left alone and he's shut out. A 10th round picked up for Tyloo. They are one away from tying things up, but it has to be the full eco now for Invictus. So it's going to be 11-11 in Tyloo. And this is what we talk about, the fact that they can be beaten down. They can lose round after round. But they're so good on these pistols. They're just relentless. Eventually, they're going to win one. Eventually, they will. And honestly, like I, I feel like Invictus are the perfect counter to Tyloo compared to any other team in Asia. You're just looking at the way they're playing, right? Like It's not about not giving respect. They, they don't play scared. They're willing to take the fight. They know that they have the individuals. And it's not about one or two star players. Like, <laughs> if you look at Beachy, we, we have, like, uh, what do we have? We got Kaze, we got Almond, and Oi! Okay, hold on. I'm surprised Horko hasn't got the cast Oi just yet. He's been loving that. Oi, Oi, it's your boy. He loves... That's his YouTube intro. And what well, <laughs> 11 rounds picked up. Tyloo, I mean, they tie things up. And, and finally, they've been able to get into this position. Invictus... They have been on the back foot, I feel like, in a couple of rounds, and they just had these hero moments, flying after the pull off a clutch. We've had big step ups from Oyen towards the beat bomb site. They've been hemorrhaging far too many players. And you can see immediately after they lose one round of the Deagles, which felt almost inevitable at one point, their money was always going to go. And on the CT side, that's a big issue moving forward for you. So Tyloo, they're not in a good position mentally and momentum based. Their money is starting to build up. Invictus. The pressure's on them to win the rounds now. They lose this one, they're right back down to another half by, and that's when Tyloo starts to really also their lead. One thing we know about Invictus are, uh, you know, you just need to give uh, flying a deagle and can do everything on <laughs> his own. True. <laughs> so, do guns really matter, Dinko? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but... maybe maybe we're reading into this having rifle stuff a little too much, Blur. Maybe yeah, she just like... be all, all the Deagles out for both teams. Imagine a, a Tyloo versus Invictus Grand Final where they're not allowed rifles. They just play Deagle every single round. I'd pay money for that. And that would be fun. <laughs> it would be stupid. It also would be really fun. But then again, a lot of fun things are stupid as well in life, Dinko. So there you go. Most things it. in life that are fun are stupid. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Except for not wearing masks while going out. That's neither fun nor stupid. Uh, nor smart that's just stupid just dumb wear mask people anyway here we go somebody over at b he's trying to find something trying to draw the rotation from the players over at a but he's not finding anyone and i like the patience from uh invictus but a few bullets and the jig is oh whoa somebody gets caught out while trying to make his escape that's uh that's massive because in the meantime the this a hit is getting held back by invictus at least for a few seconds slowly slowly push his way up to his jungle that is big now it's going to come down to danking and summer to try and find oh. something but slowly why would he do why would that? you do that why why would you do that you've now just given away that you've they've conceded jungle control i mean at least you're not going to go into that way but that could have been a free kill for slowly but now three players funneled in towards ct spawn summer holding the aggressive angle comes down to the timing smoke's going to go forward he's in front of the smoke but he's not going to get anything Ooh. done it's on slowly and Dan Kane trying to make it work and they know they know where the last player was surely at this point. They're gonna check jungle and flying cleans brilliant. it up. That's just brilliant, yeah, from Invictus and uh, not so great from Tai Lu. The jump on towards across toll boots, like the toll boot boxes, while the player peaks from triple, that was so well done. So well done. Somewhere had no idea to counter that. And Invictus win a very crucial round and more importantly, they keep a number of the players alive as well. However, the problem for Tai Lu right now, uh, sorry, the problem for Invictus right now is Tai Lu aren't going to be worried when it comes to money. They have quite a bit of cash to buy up, and they're going to buy up again here. But just a brilliant retake here from Invictus. They keep all four players alive, in fact. And uh, it's still not too much money in the bank yet, but they are slowly starting to build up a semblance of an economy pretty late into the second half here. <laughs> wow. Oh, slowly up of the chair. Sounds like he's down to 9 HP. And instead of taking that fight, he falls back. Somebody. That's what we're talking about. Get into these positions. Fever has no idea, but Destroyer? 
I wonder if that's communication from Viva. I mean, it looked like Viva had no idea that somebody was coming around the back side. But maybe he's just still fully focused on connector and he just calls the info, has enough trust in destroyer to shut down the jungle player. Then that would have been incredible. I don't know if I'm reading too much into that, but perhaps that is the call. I mean, surely there's a way Viva heard that. He'll get rid of slowly as well. Now, Oi under pressure as the push comes through to the B bomb site. Tyler just getting absolutely rinsed right now. There's absolutely no chance to win this round, surely. Viva gets rid of Dan King. 13 to 11. Money gone for Tyler. And that's just uh, another good round from Victus. Clean round. That's exactly what you want to see. We're talking about Tyler not having money. Well, they still have some, but uh, it won't be enough for a buy. So we're going to see upgraded pistols coming out here. Maybe a MAC-10. Maybe attacker might go for the, the Hero AK-47. Or maybe even Summer. I'd like to see them just sticking with some MAC-10s or some pistols and try and work something towards a B bomb site instead of just trying to go for a force here. Attacker. Nice opening, but apart from that, everything just fell down. Destroyer has just been fantastic this entire series, Dinko. A player we don't really talk about that much. You know, he tends to get overshadowed and it's not as consistent as Mr. Flying or, for that matter, even Xiao Sage, but he has been great so far. First player to break the, uh, the 20 barrier as well in the server. And we have a buy from Tai Lu. This is okay. I'm, I'm okay with the hero AK, the hero Galil. Equalizing the money out a bit, the Deagles. They have won rounds like this, so why not? And once more, it's going to come down to Attacker, who hasn't been having the sort of game we expect him to have, but it's much better than Vertigo, Dinko. He has definitely woken up. Yeah, but is it going to be enough for Tai Lu to win this game? The victors are looking poised and ready. We know they're a good Mirage team. And Shao guy is getting rid of slowly. Summer taking the fight with a Galil. He's able to pick it up. And now four versus four. Two Deagles. Galil and an AK-47 in play. That's plenty for Tai Lu. And still so much time. But Flying has pushed all the way through T-Spawn. He's going to find himself a couple of players oh, coming his no. way. But because of the way they walk around the corner, he had to flick up and then back down. And that's just going to give Attacker another millisecond to react. And he's going to take that kill every day of the week. Now... An advantage in play for Tai Lu. These are sort of rounds you don't want to lose if you're Invictus. They already lost one like this. You gotta give respect to Tai Lu. Do what you're doing on the buy rounds. There's no need to overextend. No need to go for these solo peaks. Destroyer, he's just uh, he just crouched down there towards five boxes. He's not gonna move there for at least the duration of the round. And the A hit is looking very likely, Dinko. When 30 seconds on the clock, Tai Lu, they need to make some haste. They're going to slowly creep on up. Somebody jumping around towards short. Oi. He's going to time this perfectly. A Viva falls out. It's huge. Viva finds somebody. That's great. Now it's a 3v3. And Destroyer's position here. It hasn't been found out. He can prevent the plan from taking place. But no, he's going to be calm. He's going to find the player and attacker. He finds him. Now it's a 3v2. And Destroyer out in the open, leaving it all. And Mr. Danking has got the AK. Beautiful shot into Oi. And now it's a 1v1. Viva versus Danking. And Danking, this is a brilliant reposition. Dinko, he knows exactly where the player is going to be coming in from. And it's going to take the fight <laughs> running in his direction. Why would he do that? But he Danking. still wins it anyway. What? He's just that? mental. Uh, he really is just mental. Like, what He's is mad. he doing? He just pushes through CT spawn and just, you know, I'm going to take the fight. You know, he doesn't go there and just sit up and wait. He, he just runs, continues to run. But what a clutch from Dan King. Just dropping down, taking off the head of Oi. He had so much time to reposition because Viva was so far removed. And Dan King is going to pick it up. And that's what Tyloo have. They can pull off these kind of rounds because they have these incredible individuals. And yeah, Invictus have them as well, but Tyloo's are just better. And that's the annoying part. When you play against Tyloo, even though you do pretty much everything right, you've got a huge advantage. Dan King can do that. You know, if somebody can do that. You've got attack and it's pulled off some clutches. Yeah, just analyzing the Tai Lu plays on a desk, it's simple. Like, so why did Tyloo win that game? Tyloo just better. Yeah, that's the it. players are just better. <laughs> there's, there's no other way of explaining it. They just do things normal people can't. And they do things normal people should as well. Like, then 1v3, after he gets a second kill, he knows where Viva is, but there's any other player would have gone to with CD Spawn and just waited there. He runs to jungle. Like, he runs to jungle. Like, why? Oh, man, Dan King. I thought somebody had matured and, he, you know, he stopped giving me heart attacks, but it looks like you've taken his role. Yay.
Yay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. That is fun. And well, we're going to see Ty Lu try and enter the B bomb side. But oi, okay. This is a nice spot. Coming through the smoke. They're going to run right past him. Oh, God. No way. He pulls the knife somewhere. Turn around. Dude, what is going on? <laughs> what is that? Oi just oh. finds easy kills. He plays in front of them. They run right past him. They don't even turn. They don't even realize where Oi is. He's just chilling up there in the apartments, letting them run all by. And Tai Lu, that's embarrassing. All the tweets I've made about Tai Lu's comms getting better now, that they all speak Mandarin, I take it all back. That was atrocious. What just e happened? Even with Bented and Freeman, sorry, Bented and, and, and Excurate and and the three Chinese players playing together, I think those would have still been cleaner comms in that day. I, I don't know what happened. How do you not check? I, I, no I, I literally out. don't There's think they knew you. where he was. I, I don't even think they knew where Oi was. Surely they don't. But that's easy. You don't even need to communicate though. that. You just know there's bullets right behind you. You should turn around and shoot that dude. Like, what, what is going on there? Oh. Right, nonetheless, like... Tyloo back to the Deagles. <laughs> They've got an open the hands of Dan King. So, of course, it's the kind of round they would win. I like how... Uh... You've gone from just sounding, you know, weird, like weirdly frustrated or like nonplussed to being actually angry right now, Dink. <laughs> it's it's great right? to see the elevation. Well, why? He's going to walk into the palace, gets two kills, destroyed, doing his best as well, flicking back to the left side, and somebody, he's alone. And well, he's going to find a deagle headshot, still four in total to find. He's got one already. And we'll destroy him behind triple, and yeah, flying's going to be there. Good repositioning, good round from flying. Three kills picked up. Map point for Invictus. This could be the first map that Tai Lu drop in the last how many series? It's, I've lost count at this point. But Tai Lu, anyway, the only team they've actually lost the map to is Invictus. And this would be their only three map or best of three in the entirety of PAL 2020 summer. I'll, I'll do the math for you. They have won 20 maps in a row in 10 best of three series. And this is the 11th series. And, and this is right going to be now, the first map they drop. In, in, uh, after winning 21 maps, I'm sorry, because they won the first map as well. Yep. Invictus, the only team to make Tyloo bleed. Well, Shoutside Gay looking to clean it up. It's a good double kill. Somebody is slowly both going down. And Shoutside Gay just tearing right through them. Destroyer helping as well. Attacker getting one of the MAC-10, but it's just Summer now, the last remaining player. And there it is, Invictus. They force us to a third map. We go all the way here in the grand final of PAL 2020 Summer. 